Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I'm Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. So the number one thing that we're not supposed to talk about on podcasts is the weather, because nobody cares about the weather where I am, where you are, right? Excellent point. Except, except that this winter has been, oh, oh, I cannot think of the vast amounts of expletives I would like to use to describe this winter. And keeping on topic, this winter has really wreaked some havoc on a lot of teachers who are trying to get shows ready for production. Stay tuned after the interview to hear what uh, some teachers are dealing with. This week we are talking to stage manager Tiffany Lynn Meadows, who is down in Florida, who is not dealing with this horrific winter. Tiffany is fresh out of college and she started stage managing as a senior in high school, having no idea how to put together a prompt book or call a show. Now she's a professional and we wanted to ask her, what's it like? You know, how does the professional world differ from school? And what's the one thing she would like actors to know about stage managers? Okay, let's go find that out. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to the Theater Folk Podcast, TFP. And I'm really pleased with our uh, the interview that we're going to be doing today. Uh, a little bit different, but very, very important in the theater world. And we have a stage manager with us, Tiffany Lynn Meadows. Hello, Tiffany. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm pretty awesome. Now, the first thing that I always like to do is just uh, tell people where you are in the world. I am in Orlando, Florida. In Orlando, Florida, which I'm assuming is much, much warmer than Canada right now. <laughs> it is. It's Florida cold, though. I think our high today was like 55. So it's pretty frigid for Florida. But You poor, poor people. Oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> I know. Everybody hates us right now. That's okay. <laughs> How long have you been a, a your professional stage manager? Yeah. And how long have you been one? I've been stage managing since high school. I graduated from UCF in 2012. So if you want to count from graduating college on, it's been just over a year. How awesome is it that you were able to make that transition from school to the professional world? Yeah, it was super awesome. I did an internship with the Orlando Repertory Theater in 2011. So that was the summer between my second and third year of college. And they kept me around. I'm still there today. Do you find any difference between being a stage manager in a school setting to the being a stage manager in the professional world? Yes and no. It's I think the biggest thing is that is the way that people will go about helping you. Sometimes I feel like it's a little harder to be a student stage manager because people people are kind of like go go figure it out, go learn, <laughs> go go do it. Whereas like this would be a teaching moment. <laughs> yes. Whereas like in a professional theater setting, you're kind of you're not on your own, but you figure it out or you can go to somebody who's going to help you right off the bat rather than kind of let you flounder a little bit to see what you do. Sometimes people will do that, but it's it's not any fun. By and large, right, it's it's for the good. It's in by and large, and I'm sure there's exceptions to this rule, but and professionally, everybody wants the production to go well. So it doesn't doesn't really do them any good to watch you flounder. <laughs> yeah. Now, I first came across you because you have a Tumblr called uh, Thank You Five. And not from directly from your Tumblr, but someone had posted on Facebook, you have these Tech Week bingo cards. I do. And did you and you made these, right? Yes, I did. So they're pretty awesome. Uh, everyone, I'm sure I'm not going to explain bingo to the world. I think you probably know how to do it. But in the squares instead of numbers are some of the wonderful things that perhaps might happen during tech week. Like Mike goes out during a solo, three sick cast members. This one's my favorite. The rehearsal report reaches more than five pages. <laughs> which I just you can just imagine what might happen. Now, what sort of inspired you to do this? I was in the stage management office at the rep one day and the Christmas show was in tech and something had happened. Uh, headsets were down or something, something happened that always happens during tech. Like you can count on it. There's, you may as well put money that this particular instance is going to happen every time. And I was sitting in the office and was like, I should just make bingo cards. And then maybe all the horrible things that happen during tech won't seem so annoying and somebody can like get candy out of it. So that's kind of how that happened. And then I went around and talked to 
all the different people, all the different departments. Like I went to the master carpenter and was like, hey, what's something that always happens for you during tech? Like every time, like if I was going to make a bingo card, you would win because this thing happens so frequently. And I got a list from them and I got a list from costumes. My roommate is a carpenter. My other roommate is an electrician. So I was like, guys, what goes down during tech? Always. And we just compiled it all. And now we have Tech Week Bingo. (laughs) Well, it's really hit, hasn't it? Because like I know that when we put it on our Facebook, I think it got like 30, 30 some thousand views. And it just seems to be, I think it hits a nerve, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. These things that always happen. And your Tumblr is really uh, informative. I don't think is the, the right word, but it's really informative. Like I really like how, because you have like, you answer questions, you have templates for run sheets, and there's a lot of anecdotal stories. And I think that that's that's really the best way sometimes that people can really see into a world. Yeah, yeah. Is hear their stories. Is that kind of, is that your idea? Yeah, I mean, it start, It honestly just started out as my personal blog. And then as I started, as stage management became more and more my life, it just turned into that. This is what I do all the time. So those are all my stories are what happened in tech today or what child said what during rehearsal or right. ridiculous things. The things that are going on in your head that it's better if they're out in the world and not. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so you started in high school. How come? I kind of just fell into it. I went to a performing arts high school uh, here in Central Florida over in Lakeland. And I was on the performance track. And my best friend is, she was on the technical track. And I was talking to her and I was like, yo, your job, I really like what you're doing. How can I get in on that? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Because it was very much in high school, it was the actors acted and the technicians act. And then our senior year came around and they needed a stage manager for the senior show. And our tech director was like, hey, Tiffany, do you want to do this? And I was like, uh, yeah, sign me up. And so I stage managed my first show my senior year of high school. And I don't know how I did it because I had never done, I was like an ASM for a dance show the year before. And then they threw me on this show. And I, I remember taping notebook paper to the back of my script so that I had a place to take blocking. And like, we'd be in rehearsals and my director would be like, okay, Tiffany, do this. And I just go, uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? No. And so they had to teach me like that. I remember going into paper tech and my lighting designer told us, or goes, okay, Tiffany, so your cue, like cue two is going to be here, so you need to call it here. I was writing everything down, and then my tech director stops, and he goes, do you know, do you realize, do you understand what we're telling you to do? And I just went, no, but I figure if I took enough notes, I could figure it out. So, like, we're in paper tech, the show opens next week, and they had to teach me how to call a show. And I fell in love with it, and it was great, and I kept doing it, and went from there. Well, you know you're going to do something for life when you're in an experience like that and it's not, and your response is, I love this and not, I never want to do this again. Yeah, it was, I loved it. Because I've been in the exact same situation where I got, I got thrown into, I was an ASM for a show and every step was like, yep, this, this doesn't ever need to happen again. I don't ever need to do this again. I think that's the best. I think that that's what you kind of need to do. You need to throw yourself into something and make mistakes. And you'll know you'll love something if you make a mistake and it doesn't destroy you. <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and then you went to university. What was it like to, to, to college? Were you able to major in stage management? I actually majored in uh, theater studies. So I did a BA, a general degree, but I sort of focused in stage management. UCF, the University of Central Florida, has a BFA stage management degree, but I chose to go as a BA and kind of do more of a focus rather than do the BFA. I wanted, having come from a performing arts school and know that like, if you choose to specialize in something like that, like that is all you do. And I really didn't want to chance coming out of college and hating what I had just started loving. And I also knew that being a BFA is something that I wouldn't get too much with the exception of like summer and things like that. I wouldn't get too much of an opportunity to do outside work or work with like other organizations on campus or if a friend had a show going up, it'd be really difficult for me to find the time to do that. And I wanted to be able to go and do things elsewhere and with friends and work on things other than what was going on at the school. What is your favorite part about being a stage manager? I've always really enjoyed being with the process from day like day negative four, really, before anything even starts and watching like a director's come up with their idea in the first ever design meeting and then watch it all, watch the designers put it together and then what gets changed and what gets added and then watch the actors play with it in rehearsal and then teching it and seeing it all come together and just being with it all the way through and watching the whole entire process is really, really fun for me. Do you like process or product better? Like, do you like the the work up to the the show and then the show happens or do you love what the end result is? 
Probably process. I think I really, I really, really love rehearsal and going through tech. Like it's, I love tech. Like it's my favorite part. And every actors hate it. Nobody. Why? Why do you think that is? I think it's just, not all actors hate it. I just, it's hard. It's the time of the process where things, where people should focus. And we've spent, however, like at the rep, we spent two weeks in the rehearsal. We spent two weeks focusing more on actors than anything else. Then we get into tech. It's just tedious. They don't necessarily hate it. It's just tedious for some people more than others. And the focus isn't on them. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to not say it, but. (laughs) The focus is on, well, it's on because it needs, you need two parts of the puzzle to make the the whole thing you can't yeah not have those tedious tech moments because that's when things go awry when it doesn't happen i was on your uh, just before we started i was on your tumblr and the uh, the twitters from your was your roommate who was in her her, her production failure so, yes <laughs> yeah let's make a lighting cue sheet Right before house opens why not right yeah and uh, what do you like least about being a stage manager i think sometimes different Figuring out how different people need to be, not necessarily handled, but like, I can't, I know that there are people that I can't go up and talk to and just be like, yo, this is the deal. Here's how things need to go down. I need to kind of talk them down from things rather than, and it's hard. I would much prefer just to go up to people and be like, hey, listen, here's the deal. Here's what we're doing rather than figure out how I need to play things to get them done. Yes. If that makes sense. So I totally, it's the, the need to have a multifaceted communication skill. Yeah. And that's something that I've had to work on. I think I've gotten better at it. I think I'm getting a handle on it as I work more and with different people. But it's, yeah, that's probably my least favorite thing is having, figuring out how I can talk to different people and who needs to be hugged to get something done and who can be told, I need this done. Go do like, <laughs> that's really what it boils down to, right? Who needs a hug and uh, who can just be told the straight story? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we have a lot of our our main audience is teachers and students. And there are a lot of students out there who end up in stage management pretty much exactly the same way that you did. They just sort of fall into it. They sort of they didn't know it existed. Right. Sometimes Mm -hmm. because it's that that whole idea that there's the pretty lights and the actors and the lights and then what there's things happening backstage, too. So what advice would you give to students just starting out in, in, in high school and being a stage manager? I think it's really and it's something that I learned very quickly is if things go wrong, it is not and people snap at you. It's not your fault. Don't go home and cry about it. Like you're the person that was there. Like that's really as a person, that's something that's difficult, I think, for some people to like to wrap their heads around is like your director snaps at you and you're like, oh, God, oh, no, I ruined the show. But you didn't. You something else happened earlier in the day and they've been dealing with tons and tons of little things and you just happened to be there. And so you got the brunt of it. Learning to deal with emotional situations like that is really helpful. And just asking questions and learning. Sometimes you don't want to ask a question because you are supposed to be the person who knows everything. Yeah. But asking questions is so important because you could be wrong about something or just double checking that you're right. And nobody, nobody's going to be upset at you for clarifying something like they would much rather you ask. And like today I was taping out the floor for my next show and I was in the technical director's office probably 10 times over the course of 30 minutes asking questions as I was taping the floor out. Like they want you to ask so that everybody's on the same page because there's also situations where you'll ask a question and somebody's like, oh, I wasn't even aware that was an issue. So things come up all the time and just be open and be communicative and enjoy it. Like if you don't enjoy it, then there's no point. Do something else. Do you find that, why is it, do you think that the stage manager seems to be the epicenter, right? The person that gets yelled at, the person that people come to either for being, for the straight shoot or for the hug. Like, why do you think that is? I think it's because part of it is because you are there. So you're who they see all the time. Like you're in production meetings and you're talking to the director and the designers and you're there. The actors talk to you during rehearsals. And then once you get into performances, you're there backstage with them and like you're just you're always there (laughs) and they always see you so it's as far as people coming to you I think it's that and then going back to asking lots of questions sometimes you just ask sometimes the director's had enough questions and you ask the question that tips them over and so you're there and you just it's just where you happen to be wrong place wrong time sometimes (laughs) do you think that it's necessary to have a thick skin to be a stage manager I do. I think it is. There's a fine line I've found because it's something that I struggle with between having a thick skin and looking like you're just 
being horrible and jaded and don't care about anybody. Right. It's a fine line. It is a fine line because I, uh, you know, you, you meet some of those people who have that barrier mm-hmm. after years and years of, of taking it too personally. Yeah. When they're the one. What do you want all actors to know about stage managers? What is something you wish that all actors knew? It's the little things. <laughs> it's returning your pencils and throwing your water bottles and reading the emails that we send. <laughs> and it's the little things that make us happy. That's what I'd like everyone to know. <laughs> Give me my pencil. Read my email. My pencil's back. <laughs> Bring like a cup of coffee to rehearsal every once in a while or like a candy bar. Like that's, that's all. <laughs> nice. I don't, I don't ask for much. Okay, so let's let's just uh, focus in on our four student stage managers. So what do you think are three skills that every stage manager needs to, if you're thinking about taking this on, what are three skills you need to learn to excel at doing this job? I think you need to be able to focus because a lot of times there are five different things going on around you at the same time and you need to be able to focus and prioritize and see, okay, I'm calling the show right now, the conversation behind me can wait or things like that. So focus is one. I think being able to communicate is another. Yeah. Just like you said, being able to talk to different people. Yeah, absolutely. Patience is very important. I don't know if it's a skill you can learn, but... Oh, I think it's a skill. Well, patience is something that's super, super important. Don't be too patient. Sometimes people do need to get it together and you need to let them know. But some days, the one scene shift, you're going to run it 20 times in a row. And it's going the 17th time you'll want to blow your head up, but you've got to keep going. You've got to figure it out. Patience and being able to see that different people need different things. Your crew needs time to run things where your lighting designer needs time to design. Your director has to talk to like, it's just being aware and patient and focused and communicative. Yeah. All of it. All of them. Hit them all on the head. All at once. All at once. At the same time. At the same time. To everybody. And then uh, do you have, you must have uh, your own stage manager's kit. I do. I love it. (laughs) Yes. So what is, why? Why do you love it? I got it for, my parents got it for me for Christmas one year. And I just, it just has a lot of little pockets and little slots for pencils. And it's just perfect. And I love it. It's like a scrapbooking box. One of those that you can get it like Joann's and people, you can wheel it around and it's what it is. And I love it. And it's huge and it's perfect. For any of our teachers and students who are listening, every stage manager has sort of a, either a, a fisherman's box or as Tiffany said, a, 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 a scrapbooking thing that basically has the entire kitchen sink of anything that might be needed. What do you think the three most used things are in your kit? Pencils and highlighters, definitely. A three-hole punch gets a lot of use, actually. And either the first aid kit or like bobby pins are are tied for three. Bobby pins and and like ponytail holders and things like that. What's the weirdest thing in your kit? Hmm. I think right now the weirdest thing in my kit, I have somewhere in there. I think there's a fake bird somewhere (laughs) in there from the last show that I did. I think I have a, a, a doofer bird. In my kit. <laughs> okay, now that's awesome. I didn't expect... There, there you go. If you need... So there you go. I keep random doofers. Yeah, somebody told me one time, they put a flower in my kit. And I was like, why'd you do that? And they went, somebody always needs a flower. So I keep like fake flowers, like doofer flowers in my kit. There's... Yeah, I had a doofer uh, soda bottle for a while because that got used quite a bit. Okay so, what, okay, so what was the strangest thing that somebody asked for that you were able to pull out, if you remember? I don't remember. I feel like maybe chalk, maybe sidewalk chalk. I've had that at one point. That, that might qualify. Where do you see yourself in your future? What does your, your future look like as a stage manager? I really want to go, I don't know if it's my ending point, but I want to go to Chicago and work there. I've always, always wanted to go and live there and work there. I don't have a specific theater in mind, but I just, Chicago is a really cool place and I'd love to go work there. It's a very cool theater city. Yeah, it is. Okay, and then one last question. So for our for any student who is sort of who falling in love with uh, stage management in high school and they're thinking about going to school or pursuing it, what would you say to them? I would say go see theater, first of all. Go see other shows. Don't just hang out at your high school. Go see shows at the other schools or shows at the community theater or shows that tour. And something else that I've always really enjoyed doing is take advantage of being a student because you can super easily email... Like when I went to Chicago, for example, two summers ago, right after my internship at The Rep, I picked three shows to go see and I emailed all three theaters and said, hi, I'm a stage management student 
is there any chance that your stage manager would be willing to meet with me and either just talk about their experience or maybe do a backstage tour or even like shadow them? And all three theaters, I was able to go to Steppenwolf, Looking Glass, and Clabber Action. Steppenwolf, I was able to do, just meet with the stage manager and talk. Looking Glass actually let me sit on headset with them for the show. Clabber Action, I had a connection there anyway, so I got to go hang out and see backstage and see all of that. So it's just ask questions, like email people ahead of time, see if they'll let you do things like that. And a lot of places, especially if you're a student, are really open to that. They're really open to facilitating and answering questions and helping you learn. What a great experience. What did you learn from that? Like, what was that? What did you learn from that experience? Honestly, I don't know how much I learned. I was just like so stoked to be there. Yeah. Did you get some interesting advice? I got to look at some really cool, I think the coolest things that I saw were just prompt books and the way they lay things out. I'm a nerd about my books is my favorite thing is I'm, I nerd out about my prompt books. So getting to see their calling scripts and like the different spaces, especially in Chicago, because they're like between storefront theaters and Looking Glass, like there's Steppenwolf, obviously, which is a huge, huge theater. Um, Looking Glass performs in the Water Tower in Chicago. So getting to go backstage and see all that was really cool. And then Collaboration is a storefront theater on like the third floor of a building in Wicker Park. So learning how different people just set up in those spaces and the ways that things have to be run in different theaters, that was really cool. Just seeing the vast difference of things that are so close to each other was really neat. Well, that's really important too, because theater spaces are just not your high school space. There are so many different kinds and set up in so many different ways. And Okay, so one more thing. So you're, you're a nerd about prompt books. Yes. So what is the most important thing that, to you in setting up a good prompt book? I think it really just needs to be organized and so that anybody, if anything were to happen to you, could find, just open up your book and say, okay, I've got to call the show today. For example, it's happened to me before. Somebody had to pick up my book and call a show. It's to be able to find what they need, labeling and dividers and just making sure things are very clear. If you like, I tend to write in shorthand sometimes when I'm initially taking blocking notes. And so I will sit with my book after I write up the shorthand and make sure that it's in a readable way, readable, like presentable thing so that if another stage manager had to look at it, she could say, okay, cool. Erin is going to go this way. And so she's not saying, just wondering what everything means. Awesome. It's good to, to talk about these things because, you know, there's students out there who, who don't even know what a prompt book, who have never had to record blocking, who don't know that, oh, maybe I need to, what would happen if I got sick and someone else had to come in and, and call the show? And these are, it's all good stuff to just sort of, you know, put out in the atmosphere, I think. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for talking to me and uh, as, uh, spending a little uh, time uh, to out of your afternoon. Do you have a, do you have a, you are not in a show yet. You were preparing for a show. I am preparing for a show. We start rehearsals on Monday for Busy Town at The Rep. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, Tiffany. So I'm going to put the link to Tiffany's Tech Week bingo in the show notes, and you can also find them at theaterfolk.com slash episode 80. Before we go, let's do some Theater Folk news. So we often ask questions on our Facebook page because, well, first of all, our fans are awesome, and they have a lot of great info and insights question the masses and get an answer from a whole bunch of people instead of just one or two. It's, it's, they're really great. They have great things to say. And also, I think that having a community like, like our Facebook group, it's a great way to show teachers that they, that you, you're not alone. You know, if you're going through some struggles, you know, like dealing with winter, there are going to be other teachers out there somewhere going through the exact same thing. So I'll, lead this up to are you on our facebook group are you on our facebook page facebook.com slash theater folk so this week we asked how has this crazy winter weather affected your rehearsal slash performance schedule and we got a ton of answers uh, carolyn greer in kentucky is trying to get a premiere ready and i know this because it's my play she's premiering ah! and uh, she's less than two weeks from opening and because of snow days they have only had one rehearsal in the past 10 days i know they're freaking out and i know they're gonna do an awesome job caitlin is 12 rehearsals behind douglas has competition this weekend and is crossing his fingers they'll have school in a horrible weather story, Luann slipped on the ice, broke her ankle. Uh, and lastly, Carol Marie Stock wishes she had a show in rehearsal for the weather to ruin. Now, that is a positive spin. Love it. 
Finally, where or where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page, Facebook and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk. You can find us on the Stitcher app and you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. Go there. Search on the word theaterfolk. Leave a review. That would be awesome. And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care. Take care.